I'm Brian Bellendorf, Executive Director of Hyperledger, which is part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, and I thought I'd spend just a, a few minutes kind of uh, waking many of us up. Uh, I'm sure there was uh, some, uh, a couple of big parties last night. So, uh, and, and I mean, the topic of enterprise uh, use of blockchain technology could certainly put some people to sleep. Um, but what I think, uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on in this space, uh, some real problems being solved. And I thought I'd take you kind of into a deep dive of, first off, who we are, because I'm sure some of you uh, still haven't quite uh, grokked what we're about. Uh, and then some examples of where we're getting used and really what the technologies are about that we're building. So the first thing to understand uh, just at a high level is that Hyperledger is one of over 50 different projects at the Linux Foundation. And Linux Foundation's been around for about 15 years, coordinating the software development activities in not only the Linux ecosystem, uh, but ecosystems around uh, uh, Linux and around other kind of infrastructural open source projects, from uh, automotive use of Linux and telco use of Linux to cloud computing. You're probably familiar with Kubernetes and the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, uh, to all sorts of software-defined networking applications, uh, to all sorts of JavaScript uh, frameworks uh, as part of the JavaScript Foundation and Node.js. So what all of these communities have in common is that at the uh, underlying these things is uh, the Linux Foundation, which provides a neutral ground for the developers uh, who are building these things to work together, uh, not to pay developers directly. We still depend upon companies uh, funding developers for those developers to to have some intrinsic reason why they're showing up, their employer uses the code, or they, want to, they, they found a bug they want fixed, that sort of thing. Um, so to help coordinate their activities, make sure that there is a home for those activities, you know, you, you can solve the hit by a bus problem, right, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, at the business level as well, helping the companies building products and services on top of these platforms, understand how to get the best use out of them, how to work with each other, uh, and coordinate whether it's their development activities or their marketing activities, and then to do things to grow the ecosystem even more broadly, from uh, events you know, where we bring devs together and, and such, to training and certification, uh, to all sorts of outreach, just to make sure that each of these areas has a really solid, killer, open source offering uh, at the heart of these spaces. And blockchain technology is really an inf a piece of the infrastructure. We should hope at some point this technology becomes boring, right? Becomes like the plumbing in a house, or the plumbing in a building, right? Or the electrical supply, something that we can take for granted because because it just works. And so we're trying to put together the projects and efforts to make that possible. And in the two years that Hyperledger has been around, we've achieved some, some pretty remarkable things, in, our, in, our, in my opinion. Um, we now have uh, nine, actually uh, uh, 10 software development projects under our wing. We just accepted one yesterday, so I'll mention that very briefly when we go through them. Um, across these 10 projects, uh, we've had 25,000 different pull requests and commits to the code, meaning improvements made by different developers, hundreds of different developers involved across these different efforts, um, five different kinds of blockchain technologies, I'll step through, four different tools that make these usable, and two of our projects, Fabric and Sawtooth, have now gone to a 1.0 release, which means they're usable in production. And that sounds like perhaps a, a not a big deal, 1.0, what does that number mean? We've said it means that the developers feel comfortable with people they've never met <laughs> using this code uh, to manage and track real assets, right? This, that's kind of a big deal. So we do all sorts of things to make sure the code is uh, of production quality, enterprise quality, when it hits that point. Uh, we have a, a tremendous number of uh, members now uh, uh, supporting us as well. Uh, and these are companies, many of whom uh, are building products and services on top of Hyperledger. Uh, some of them are simply end users of the technology, and they want to know where it's going. They want to uh, participate in its evolution. They, they perhaps embedded deeply inside of products and services you'll never know about or see, right? Uh, but they include some really interesting bedfellows, people like DTCC that Patrick talked about earlier, who, is re who are reinventing their core or uh, ledger systems using uh, uh, distributed ledger technology to companies like Baidu, who are using it at the heart of some pretty advanced uh, artificial intelligence work they're doing, to Change Healthcare, which is using it to reinvent the insurance claims process that they are at the center of. They touch 80% of healthcare claims in the United States, uh, to all sorts of companies that are using this in, in all sorts of use cases. Uh, and, and not only have we had uh, a lot of support, uh, wow, it didn't even render, um, but this was supposed to be the list, <laughs> uh, perhaps it's too small a font, of the 
the 200 other uh, members who have joined uh, Hyperledger, uh, 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 in addition to the premier members, who aren't just big companies that you might uh, recognize names of, but are also startup companies. Because uh, there's been a tremendous pickup of these technologies by people looking to provide disruptive solutions in all sorts of different uh, 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 sectors, all sorts of different use cases. Um, and we also have a growing list of nonprofits, government agencies, central banks like the Bank of England, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, others uh, like uh, the, the, Fed, uh, the National Association of Federally Insured Credit Unions, I mean, all these crazy organizations who are realizing their role is to bring their members together uh, to solve uh, uh, real problems, because there's no such thing as a blockchain of one, right? No such thing as a, as a distributed ledger that solves a problem just for one company. You have to get an ecosystem play around it. So we've been building these relationships with organizations like that. So to uh, dive into some of the nitty gritty details, uh, because uh, the substance is what really matters here, right? None, none of what we do would matter if we weren't actually shipping production quality code. So uh, the five different frameworks we have uh, all touch on and solve different, uh, the, the, the same general problem, which is how do I build a, a, a buzzing kind of the hybrid of a database and a network where uh, people can write transactions in, others can query it out, um, and, and we can layer some interesting smart contracts on top. So uh, I'll go into each of those five really quickly, and then four, four, four more tools, actually a fifth called Caliper, uh, that make using these technologies easier to adopt and practical. So with Fabric, Fabric is perhaps the one that most of you have heard when you've heard uh, uh, Hyperledger used. Um, uh, this hit a 1.0 back in July. The 1.1 version has a release candidate coming out soon. Um, over 100 developers have contributed to the development of Fabric, uh, have gotten their code in in one way or another. Uh, over 50 different companies uh, have uh, all, you know, either employed those developers or, or otherwise contributed to the project. Um, there are uh, uh, reports uh, based on our members of more than 400 different active uh, uh, pilots, uh, POCs, uh, or in some cases, production systems uh, running out there using this technology. Um and it's got some sophisticated ideas. In some ways, it's basic. It's kind of like the MySQL of, of what we offer, uh, in that it's, it's pretty straightforward in terms of how you would use it as an extension of, uh, or as if you've built transaction systems before or know how they work, this is kind of a logical extension of that. Um, but you can do some interesting things, like say, I've got a network of 100 nodes, but I only care about the really performance-sensitive part of it, which is putting the transactions in order. I can have four uh, different uh, of those nodes who are, are essentially uh, uh, more more trusted nodes than the rest, put the ordering in place, and amongst them maintain the, the, the balance of trust and the balance of interest in the network. And that means you can scale up to much higher uh, uh, transaction rates than you otherwise would be able to. All sorts of other features uh, that are interesting to it, but I want to kind of jump into some use cases where it's, it's being tested out and, 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 and pretty soon deployed, or in some cases already deployed. So cross-border payments, we've heard a lot about that at TokenFest, uh, and you've heard about Swift. Well, Swift is reinventing, just like DTCC, their core business as instead of a hub and spoke network uh, with them as the central message passer and where it takes three days to confirm a payment across their network because you have to get the ledger at this bank reconciled with the ledger at this bank. Um, instead, they're moving, they're trialing and they just issued a 28 page report uh, 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 with, about their experiments where they said, this looks uh, really promising. There's a few things still to evolve, but they expect all those issues to be hit. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and so they, they are pushing forward on top of Fabric. Um, and uh, I, it, in, in that case, just, I mean, it's, it's think, think about uh, uh, going from kind of three days to clear that kind of payment to five minutes to instantaneously, really, on a, on a distributed ledger. Um, another effort that's a collaboration between a whole bunch of big banks, Deutsche Bank, HSBC, uh, uh, NetAccess, Rabobank, Societe Generale, Santander, is something called the digital trade chain. And this is kind of the same thing, but it's focused more on uh, the supply chain and trade finance and keeping a history of the parties who are middlemen, basically, who are shippers, who are uh, sources of supply of different things. Um, uh, this is a project that's been in development for a couple of years. It's something that plans, they plan to go uh, pilot with this year. Uh, and use real customer data in, and uh, uh, there's a lot of good, exciting stuff happening there. Um, and of course, you've heard about diamonds. Uh, if you've seen, I, I love talking about this just because it's so accessible, and uh, diamonds are a girl's best friend, I guess. Um, but uh, I, I, the diamond industry is now in production on a distributed ledger using fabric tracking what is currently millions of diamonds and what will eventually be each year tens of millions of diamonds from the mine that they get pulled out of the ground from to the retail channel. 
right? And it'll get to a point where uh, uh, if somebody tries to sell you a large diamond they claim is a real diamond, uh, if they can't prove that they pulled it or that they have the entry that corresponds to it in the digital ledger, you probably don't want to buy it, right? Because it's probably from a not, a not a good source or uh, uh, might not actually be a real diamond. So this is in production today, and they've already found millions of dollars worth of fraud. Uh, let's say mi missing paperwork that they've been able to uh, stop uh, uh, these diamonds from flowing through the system, and that's pretty cool. Um, Sawtooth. So Sawtooth is kind of if, if uh, uh, Fabric is the MySQL of, of uh, our project, Sawtooth is the Cassandra. Sawtooth starts out a bit more from the perspective of what if we take what, what really we've learned from Bitcoin and from uh, the cryptocurrency world and try to bring that to the enterprise. Um, uh, and so it supports both permissioned and permissionless deployments. It has a novel consensus mechanism called proof of elapsed time, which is kind of like proof of work, but without the CPU burn. Uh, and there's a lot of pushback to that because it involves um, using uh, uh, basically facilities inside of the secure enclaves of uh, Intel chips. And if, as soon as other uh, chip manufacturers want to join the project, they can get their code in as well. Um, uh, but it's, uh, uh, it's a way of also building these very large networks uh, in a way that, that might be harder with other, other systems. Um, so it's, uh, it also supports on-chain configuration tracking. Uh, and and um, one thing that we did when we hit 1.0 was uh, the Sawtooth team worked with another team at Hyperledger uh, called Burrow, which is an implementation of the Ethereum VM, and brought that in. So with Sawtooth 1.0, you can take smart contracts written for the Ethereum mainnet or for any private deployment and run it on top of Sawtooth, which is, uh, again, pretty cool. Um, Intel is working with uh, members of the fishing industry to uh, implement a tracking system, much like the diamond one, for the fish industry um, to try to keep uh, pirating uh, at bay and try to keep uh, uh, fish caught out of quota uh, uh, from entering the supply chain and prove that when you buy something labeled as tuna, uh, it actually is tuna and not, not some other fish. Uh, this is in production this year, and uh, I'm sorry, in, in, in piloting this year and hopefully in production next. Um, uh, another deployment of this is around something completely different, which is tracking of music rights. There's a company called Dot Blockchain Media. Sorry for all the text on the slide, uh, but Dot Blockchain is working on uh, 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 tracking who owns what uh, songs, what are the royalties, what are the rights, uh, so that when some, uh, 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 players get set up that are playing a track, uh, uh, they know how they can direct uh, the funds that are associated with paying for that music. Um, it's not a transaction system in terms of tracking what you're listening to, but instead making sure that that the artists and the other producers and such behind music get appropriately compensated rather than going through these, these opaque uh, uh, royalty, royalty schemes like ASCAP and BMI. Um, Hyperledger Aroha is uh, a third framework. This is something that's more tightly coded C++. This is something that'll be in 1.0 pretty soon. Uh, it's focused on really raw DLT applications uh, uh, and, and less so on the smart contract space, but it has some great mobile libraries. Um, it's already in use uh, by uh, the national, uh, not in use, but in, in pilot mode by the National Bank of Cambodia uh, for a digital currency initiative that they're running, uh, as well as a Japanese bank called Sampo Holdings for a weather derivatives management system. Uh, uh, these are uh, production, uh, not, sorry, again, pilot projects that are pretty far along. Uh, Indy, uh, no, I, I'm doing like a whirlwind tour of our projects, but there's so much fun stuff happening. Indy is a self-sovereign ID-based platform. It's focused on doing things like India's Aadhaar system or uh, I, a, 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 you know, instead of having a login with Facebook, login with Twitter uh, type of, sis, of identity system out there, instead recentering it on who you are and the, and the uh, assets that you hold close to you and your decision to share information selectively, track that and withdraw rights to that uh, as you so choose. Um, this is a collaboration between us and a bunch of other organizations that uh, will be put into pilot mode this year by an organization, amongst many others, by this group in the Philippines who are using it to implement a user self-sovereign based know your customer uh, project where you can take your financial history with one bank and transfer it to uh, uh, another when you're applying for a loan or, or something else. And if that's successful, uh, and it's done in the right way, in a distributed self-sovereign way, may be used to, to bootstrap a national ID system in the Philippines or elsewhere. Uh, really quick, because I'm running out of time, Burrow is an implementation of the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, Composer is a high-level tool for authoring uh, 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 blockchain applications. It generates an Angular-based, uh, uh, Angular.js uh, application for you based on the work, uh, uh, based on the roles and the business processes you define. Quilt is all about building bridges between ledgers and being able to do escrow 
zero-free transactions across them. And what does this all mean, right? You've, you've probably spent most of this uh, yesterday and you'll spend today talking about ICOs and tokens and public cryptocurrencies. Um, these are all examples of what people are doing without using tokens as a way to drive the consensus mechanism. But all of them involve tokenizing, or most of them involve in tokenizing real-world assets or even virtual assets at one point or another. Um, and that's still going to be really interesting because settlement matters uh, on these networks. Being able to like actually finish out a transaction and true, up, true everyone up and move on to the next is an essential part of making these work. And these are tools that you can use today in production, as many people are, and uh, get involved. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Oh, and we, oh, but one last thing. We do have an edX course uh, 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 on edX.org called uh, Blo Blockchain for Business. Uh, 77,000 people have already signed up in, uh, for the course and started to take it. Uh, and it really dives into the theory behind all of this. So uh, uh, thank you for all that, and uh, I'll be around today. Let's talk.